the neutrophils have learned to kill the... Hans Hoppeler, um, you're the editor-in-chief of the Journal of Experimental Biology. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the goals of the symposia that the journal runs? Uh, the goal of this symposia is really to bring together people, uh, scientists with a common interest, but uh, working on a particular problem from a very different angle. Ideally, we would like to have people uh, that would not normally meet at uh, their conferences. So that is really to bring people together for a, com more, a better understanding, more common understanding of physiological phenomena. And why was the subject of stress chosen for this particular symposium? Well, stress of course uh, happens on all levels and there are very many ways from behavioral to molecular to look at stress. And this is exactly what we try to do here, to bring these people with such diverse interests together and to interact. And what do you think that this meeting um, has achieved? Well, it has achieved that, of course, the immediate outcome is that we publish uh, the review volume with this, so we make this uh, interesting interdisciplinary event uh, public for everybody. But then I've, I think all of the people that have been here have been changed because they, they got a different <coughs> perspective of the work that they do every day. And what do you think the future is? Um, how do you feel that this symposium will influence the future of stress research? Well, from, from looking at the, ta uh, at, at the interactions that I saw, I think that both the molecular and the behavioral end of stress has profited in enormously in terms of broadening the, the science that they're doing. Thank you very much, Hans. John, um, welcome to the JEB Symposium in Muren, Switzerland. What was your uh, reaction when you received the email inviting you to the meeting? I was just really pleased. I mean, just the idea of studying stress and knowing it's lots of different things to different people. And I thought, well, that's quite interesting, yeah. You're really keen. Okay, and did you know anything about JEB Symposium before you re received I, I, the email? I did. I mean, I'd, I'd heard of the ones that had been on before. I heard the multidisciplinary nature of bringing people together who wouldn't normally be together. Mm -hmm. And that can either be really dangerous or mm -hmm. it can be extremely exciting. Right, and what did you speak about at the meeting? I, I basically took everything that I had sort of been doing in the past and put it into the context of asking ecophysiology is, is it a worthwhile subject right. because there's a sort of feeling that ecophysiology is, is just the study of how do animals live where they live mm -hmm. you know? and in fact it's more than that and, mm -hmm. and I was trying to bring out the, the principles of what's more by using stuff from my own research. Right, and how, what do you feel the symposium has achieved? How has it developed? And well, it's, it's really stretched in my mind. I mean, you, you sit through stuff that you know, and you know well, and yes, you can be critical and everything else, and you can think about it, but, but you're almost thinking within the box that you're in. And all of a sudden, I mean, we have talks on heat shock proteins by people who really know their stuff. Mm -hmm. And first of all, you're struggling to keep up, so there's a lovely yes. humility in there. Yes. But at the same time, this stuff's relevant, there's connections going off all over the place that wouldn't happen unless that you know, person had said that in that, in that particular way. And so new ideas have been generated the whole time. And some people have said there is nothing worthwhile discovering unless it's multidisciplinary. Right. Now, and if that's true, that, that happens at organisation organisational events like this. And what do you think you'll take from this meeting into your own research? <laughs> no, that's a really good question. I mean, um, people as much as ideas. I mean, being able to, to, to meet people who are, who are like-minded, even though the field is different, is, is hugely exciting. And a lot of the, the mechanistic stuff that we're, I'm hearing just now, which is it's not unfamiliar to me, but I'm not expert in it. But being able to take that and, 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 and see it in the light of e ecology and evolution. So looking for relevance in physiology at the level of ecology and evolution. And I'm getting, I think, some of the really best mechanistic physiology that is around. That's great. Thank you very much for speaking to me, John. You're welcome.
Andy Cousins, um, welcome to the JEB Symposium in Muren, Switzerland. Um, you were invited along as the keynote speaker. Can you tell me what your reaction was um, when the invitation came through? Well, thrilled with the idea of spending a few days up in the Swiss mountains um, for the first time ever going skiing. But more than that, it was actually the list of speakers, I think. It was the sheer calibre of the people we were confronting and also the diversity of the topics they were presenting on. And uh, you gave the plenary lecturer. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the talk that you gave? Yes, I gave the introductory talk, which was on the first evening, really about the work we've been doing in Liverpool, using a range of different uh, post-genomic screening strategies to try and generate some new ideas and how animals cope with environmental stress, in particular cold. And this was work done using sea elegans. That's very model species. Right. Very environmental, very jelly bee. <laughs> Fantastic. And what have you taken home from the meeting. Oh, the sheer quality of stuff that's going on out there in the scientific world. Um, I think we've had people speaking about plants, about microbes, about animals from all sorts of different environments and really the kind of insights and the outcomes are simply stunning and I think it's to have this integration that gives value to the way that these conferences are created. Normally people go to a one species uh, conference on zebrafish say or sea elegans but here we've got everything represented and even those guys that are coming in who are expert let's say in sea elegans suddenly uh, seeing for the first time the range of species that they could work on if they were able to. Can you describe a little bit of the format of the meeting, how it differs from other meetings that you usually go to? Well, it's a very small meeting. You have maybe 20 presentations over a three-day period, informal surroundings, so everybody gets to meet and get to know everybody else. And that's really kind of unusual these days, where sometimes you have meetings with two or three hundred people, or even worse than that, five or six thousand people, where really the relationships don't form in the same sort of way. And actually everybody tends to cluster into their own predetermined networks rather than cross-fertilise. Andy, thank you very much.